Giants. They're also 0-3, and they lost to the Atlanta Falcons 17-14 to on Sunday. And the Atlanta Falcons, up until this game, they looked like they could rival the Jets for the worst team in football. You know, the defense couldn't stop anybody. And then the Giants score 14 against them. Daniel Jones, 266 yards, no touchdown. Saquon had a touchdown. But the Giants, again, they can't win games. They really struggle to win games. And they had a lot of chances to win again. Adore Jackson dropped an interception in the end zone. And then that led to a touchdown. So it's just been so frustrating as me personally as a Giants fan it's just been so frustrating to watch to see the same thing every year the same mistakes the same inability to close out games I just I I honestly can't take it anymore it's just been it's been a rough last couple of years for me yeah I guess the one difference between the Jets and Giants because both are terrible football organizations right now is Giants fans at least had a little more hope third year with your new quarterback second year with your head coach you know, six and 10 last year, it's not sexy. It's not going to win you anything. But, you know, they really built towards something at the end of the year. They had a shot at that playoffs in that terrible division. So you hope to build on that this year. And these three games to start the year, we're not against world beaters. I know Denver's undefeated, but, you know, we'll get into them in a second. Their three wins are against the three worst teams in football. Falcons, you mentioned, beyond unimpressive. And the football team, too, is really disappointed that defense is not what it was. And the scary thing is Daniel Jones is not even playing, like, terrible. One turnover in three games, I right. believe. Yeah, I wanted to mention that. Like, Daniel Jones, yeah. you, you were concerned about him going into the year, and it was all, you know, reliant on, on, okay, we have Kenny Galladay. We've made improvement on defense, but it's going to come down to Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones played good. He's played good enough, and they're still not winning games. It's it's just a mess. Yeah, um, and, and, like, you look at Joe Judge, and he's the ultimate football guy, and it looks like guys want to play for him, but his number one thing – when he took this job was we're not going to beat ourselves up. You know, we're going to play fundamental football, all this stuff. And it's just not what's happened. You look at the game versus the football team, you know, Dexter Lawrence lines up off sides, you know, Can't Dustin happen. Hopkins shanks a kick. He gets a do over and he obviously makes it. So like stuff like that can't happen. The penalties have to stop. You look also, Brian, at these next seven games. Oh, I've, lo- I've looked at them. Hardest schedule in football. Yeah. You know, I think throughout the rest of the season, they have rated the hardest schedule. You're at the Saints, at the Cowboys, Rams, the three no Panthers, at the Chiefs, first Raiders, at the Bucks. That, 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 there are not a lot of wins in that schedule. Is I'll there a single why. win on that? I don't know. So, like, it's not going to get better here. And then, like, you have to go big picture. You know, do you, do you like? go of Dave Gettleman I think he certainly warranted I think it's that question. I yeah. certainly a legit question we don't have to have that convo right now because we're still three weeks into this year but it's something that's going to creep up on this team and it's something that's not going to go away and it doesn't look like for them and you know like what is going to change for them because this was your easy part of the schedule you were not able to take care of business no there are certainly no gimmies coming up and we mentioned the play calling with the Jets I think it's the same thing here I mean Jason Garrett there's just a lack of creativity with his play calling and what plays he's drawing up. I mean, you know, 14 points against the Atlanta Falcons, Jalen Hurts carved them up week one, and then the Buccaneers obviously had no problem with them, but the Giants only scored 14. Now, granted, the Giants did lose Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton in that game, and Kenny Galladay was really banged up, too. Like, there were some drives where he just wasn't on the field at all. So I'm going to cut them a little bit of slack for that, and – it's another thing for Daniel Jones. You know, he's losing his weapons now. You know, Kadarius Tony hasn't been involved at all. You waste a first round pick on him and now you just can't get him the ball. He had two catches, I think, on Sunday. But he, he needs to be more involved. As a first round rookie, you could have gone in so many different directions. I was skeptical about the wide receiver. And now and now he's just he's just not involved. Even with Slayton and Shepard being out, he just couldn't get involved. The favorite target was Colin Johnson. <laughs> who they picked up off of the practice squad. So it's it's just really puzzling what direction this offense is going in. You would hope it improved a little bit. We kind of saw that against Washington on that Thursday night. But again, against the worst even in football, you have to do more. And a lot of it relies on the Giants cashing in in the red zone. They had three red zone opportunities, and two of them ended really prematurely. You know, the first one ended thanks to a 12-yard sack where, you know, Jared just – completely got to run through and just sack Daniel Jones with ease 12 yard loss that pretty much took you back to the 20 you're not scoring a touchdown and then the second Daniel Jones just 
totally drops the snap and has to fall on the ball. And then on the third one, Saquon scores a touchdown. And then you, the, the big thing, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but the big thing is the defense so far. The defense is, was supposed to be a strength for this team coming in. You know, you had Leonard Williams with the year he had last year. You brought him back, signed him to a contract. James Bradbury coming off the year he had. And then you added Dory Jackson. There were high hopes for this defense. And say what you will about the offense, but this Giants defense has had the lead in two fourth quarters in a row, and they haven't been able to get a big stop. So I would say that's the biggest thing for me. This defense has not been as good as I've expected it to be, and it could really hinder them for the rest of the season. I mean, it can really hinder them the rest of the season. What season is left almost? Yeah. Like, we, we can keep going over back and forth here, but – things aren't going to just turn around magically. These were your easier games. This was your you know, landing pad here to get some momentum, get some confidence. You weren't able to do so. It's just you look at this Giants team, like what is going to change? I don't see it on the current roster. I don't see it, the guy making the decisions. So, like, we can go back and forth here, Brian, but I think the bottom line at the end of the day is things are not going to just magically get better. You need to make changes if you want to return to being a premier winning franchise.